Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining, Professor. It's a pleasure having you on. I'd love if you could begin with a possible introduction of yourself, your educational background, and where your career has taken you. Yes. Well, thank you for inviting me to this interview. Um, I'm a retired professor of international business ethics at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, and I've been here for uh, over uh, 30 years. But uh, as you probably can hear from my accent, I'm not from South Bend, Indiana. Uh, I grew up in Switzerland, in the German-speaking part of Switzerland, uh, right after the Second World War, which was uh, quite a interesting environment. Uh, uh, Switzerland was uh, not involved in the First and Second World War, and so in a way we was quite a, a paradise for us in our family and in our neighborhood. But uh, we learned uh, also, of course, at high school that what has happened in Europe, particularly Nazi Germany, uh, that uh, uh, involved uh, not only Europe, but the whole world in the Second World War and how horrible it was. And so when we grew up uh, also in Switzerland, in Germany and France, uh, uh, we thought uh, we have to reconstruct a new Europe and uh, particularly also to uh, to make sure that uh, the people uh, in uh, Germany and the people in France and in other European countries are uh, uh, becoming friends and uh, never again uh, waging a war like that horrible war of the Second World War. So that is a little bit background. And then uh, I studied, well, first philosophy and theology also, and uh, was an educator in a boarding room, a boarding school. And uh, I'd made a trip with two American friends of mine by car with a small French car, a Duchevaux, from uh, France through uh, the Middle East, uh, through uh, uh, Iran, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, uh, to India and uh, discovered a completely new world, a world uh, of the so-called third world, poor people, many, many people uh, who are struggling to survive. And so I came back with the determination that I wanted to study economics, poverty, uh, in order to know uh, and to help them. Uh, in, uh, growing up in a rich country, you know, the situation in a poor country like India uh, was completely different. And uh, and so that's why I needed to study and to did a master and a PhD in economics and in Switzerland. And then uh, I was asked by the, by the president of the university of my home city uh, to start a center for, um, a center for research, a research center for business ethics, business and economic ethics. And that was a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to bring together my knowledge in philosophy, theology, ethics on the one hand, and economics on the other hand. And, uh, and so I studied, was there for a number of years, for six, seven years. And uh, um, I, at that time, that was in the 1980s, when uh, I got the letter from a, from a colleague of mine in the Netherlands, saying that uh, he is uh, interested in people who are doing business and economic ethics to come together in Brussels. And we meet, met there and then we started the so-called European Business Ethics Network. And we could, could involve managers from BMW, the famous uh, automobile uh, company, you know, in, in Munich, in Germany, and uh, other copy companies, ING, uh, bank in the Netherlands and from Italy and uh, France. And so we uh, thought business ethics has to focus on important challenges in companies uh, in building up a new Europe. And, uh, and so we organized every year a conference, invited business leaders and, uh, and scholars and professors to identify questions and to search for answers. And that was a wonderful experience for me and for many people, of course. Uh, you know, Europe, uh, there are many languages. Uh, 
I'm fluent in German and in French and Italian and so and English, of course, I had to learn also. Uh, but uh, then later on, uh, when uh, the, the wall of, uh, in Berlin f uh, fell, you know, the, in 1989, uh, Europe became uh, opened to the eastern part of Europe. To Czechoslovakia, to eastern, western, eastern Germany, to Poland, etc. And so we included, we organized conferences there. Uh, and what does it mean to come together east and west uh, in Europe? But at the same time, uh, I was told, I learned that in the United States, uh, there are business schools and professors and companies interested in business ethics. And so I made a, a trip to the US uh, by Greyhound from Washington, D.C. Uh, to New York, Boston, up to Los Angeles and San Francisco. And so I got an idea about the country, how large it is, of course, but also uh, many good friends who are working in the field of business ethics. And so we became friends. And, uh, and then uh, finally, uh, we thought, uh, at one uh, conference of business ethics in Spain in 1989, not only to have a European business ethics network and the American Society for Business Ethics, but to also to have an international society for business economics and ethics, which is uh, a global uh, society to include particularly uh, countries and continents uh, uh, outside the North America and Europe. And so since then, I've been involved in that. ISPI is the name of the company, of the, uh, of the organization. And currently, we are conducting a global survey of business ethics. That means uh, with about 140 people in all continents, we developed a questionnaire and uh, interview schedules and etc. And uh, want to know what are challenges and and uh, opportunities for businesses uh, and, 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 uh, and business schools uh, in the field of business and economic ethics. And uh, so uh, we are amidst uh, this process, uh, uh, people in uh, many countries are preparing country reports. For instance, uh, friends of mine in Ukraine are doing that with about seven people. Uh, to find out what are the challenges and opportunities uh, during the war and hopefully after the war. Or a friend, another friend of mine in Uganda is doing the same thing, or in China, or in Japan, and in Indonesia, and in the Philippines, and in uh, well, South America, North America, of course, uh, Europe, uh, many countries, and Africa, um, and India, etc. So that is gives you an idea how global uh, well my mind is I and it happened so step by step I did not plan that when I was growing up in Switzerland but uh, in a way I became an international guy or a global guy as a friend of mine told as <laughs> uh, called me uh, because uh, we live on the same planet earth and uh, many issues we have in common and other issues are separate, of course. Amazing. What a fascinating journey. That is so inspirational and obvious. Um, I think your diverse perspective and seeing so many things has truly led you to the place where you are today. Um, as you kind of touched on Notre Dame, um, what how was that experience? How is that experience? And was there any students that maybe stood out to you and truly um inspired you and showed um, such a key figure within the university? Yes. Well, that's a, a funny story. You know, I was uh, invited for a, a scholarship at Harvard uh, Business, Harvard University with a famous uh, Indian economist, Amartya Sen from Kolkata, who got the Nobel Prize in economics later on. I could stay there for half a year and learn a lot and with John Rawls, who was professor of philosophy and a justice a specialist on justice questions. And then I was asked by an American friend, uh, would you like to work in the US? And I said, well, you know, I'm so involved in uh, Europe, uh, European Business Ethics Network, uh, I, I think I will go back. 
and then I went back to Switzerland. And uh, three weeks later, I got a phone call from my friend from Kansas. And uh, he said, there is a, a position, uh, an endowed chair at the University of Notre Dame on interne for international business ethics, if I'm interested. Yes. And I said, oh, yes, I am interested because it's international business ethics. That is something which I think is important and I can contribute uh, something to that from a European perspective, but also uh, from other uh, perspectives. And so I landed in South Bend a few days before Bill Clinton was elected president in 1992 in late October. And, uh, and Notre Dame was very welcoming and uh, and I could do a lot of uh, research. 50% uh, of my job was for research. And that's why we did a lot of research with people in uh, different continents. And uh, we organized the so-called Olympics of Business Ethics, which means every four years, about two weeks before the Olympic Games, uh, we uh, had our Olympics of Business Ethics uh, not in the same country, but in the same season in, in July. And uh, that was appropriate because to find a time which is convenient for everybody, you know, from Australia to uh, Chile and uh, uh, Russia and, uh, and Nairobi, uh, that uh, is not so easy to find. And so we have done that. I sent you an interview of, our, of mine uh, which uh, was uh, taken uh, in uh, last year of our World Congress of Business Ethics in Spain, in Bilbao. And so we are planning now the next Congress in uh, 2026, and hopefully it will happen in Africa. We think Africa is a very important uh, continent, and there are lots of things going on there, and young people, many, many young people, and uh, how can business make the difference and uh, and what is the responsibility of those who teach business and business ethics uh, for those young uh, men and women and uh, and so I'm uh, very convinced that uh, we have to work on that direction and not just look at our own problems we have in our own county or in our own city and country. Amazing. Yeah, what a amazing opportunity. And that's, I mean, international business ethics, I, them reaching out to you, I could imagine you'd be like, I am so qual qualified for this position. And obviously, it worked out. Um, As you kind of touch on research, and I noticed you've conducted a lot of research. Why do you think um, research is important or essential? Yes, well, research, uh, you know, should not just uh, investigate what has happened or what is going on uh, today in business and econo in the economies around the world, but also to identify important uh, challenges uh, we face today for the next five or ten years. So to look into the future. And uh, that was uh, an important uh, objective of our International Society of Business, Economics and Ethics, that each, uh, each uh, Congress, World Congress, had a, a special topic. And so uh, we, for instance, uh, when we went to Cape Town, uh, the topic was on corporate governance. And what are the challenges in different countries on corporate governance to address corruption, to address uh, sustainability, uh, to address uh, human resource management, etc., but then uh, also to publish books uh, and uh, to continue or to stimulate the discussion in different countries. So we publish those uh, uh, articles, peer papers uh, in different uh, uh, journals and books. Uh, for instance, the, the Congress, which I was also very much involved, uh, was the Congress in 2016 uh, was organized uh, by the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences in China, in Shanghai. And I was very involved in that. And the topic was ethics, well-being and innovation in business and economies. So it was about ethics, uh, but 
uh, well, be, uh, well being uh, and innovation, not innovation to the, the, uh, to uh, develop or investigate, develop uh, uh, useless or dangerous things, but ethical to ethical things, good things and new things together. And, uh, and so uh, that uh, has been published uh, in uh, different books. And uh, even my friend in uh, Shanghai, who she is a professor, or is now retired, but professor of business ethics and philosophy, she translated all those uh, papers and articles uh, into Chinese and published that uh, now this uh, early this you know, last year uh, in Chinese. And uh, that is something which is close to my heart, so to speak, that uh, we have to keep in touch with our colleagues and friends and challenges in mainland China and in Hong Kong and Taiwan also, of course. Uh, you know, you probably could see from my uh, bio uh, that uh, I also, uh, from Notre Dame, I was allowed to teach in China, in Shanghai for many years, uh, a, mas a master of business administration for many Chinese young men and women. And that was for me again an eye-opener because uh, I thought, uh, uh, you know they have uh, they are very attentive they are very smart they want to learn and uh, but uh, i need to understand the chinese world uh, which is very different from ours you know and and so it took me a while but uh, i think uh, it was a great experience for both sides and again yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. research you know and and now of course my last book which uh, i think i showed you the cover uh, on corporate responsibility for wealth creation and human rights is a kind of uh, uh, syn uh, synthesis of uh, the many work, uh, much work uh, we have done uh, in our International Society of Business, Economics and Ethics. Okay. And one important research focus there is what makes a country rich, you know, mm. and uh, and I learned, uh, I mean, as I told you, I was uh, in India and I was shocked by the poverty in India and, and wanted to study that. And I did also my PhD on poverty in Switzerland, in a rich country. But with the experience I made in China, how in the economic reform under Deng Xiaoping and the opening up of the country, what does it mean that the country should get rich you know, what is the wealth of a nation? And of course, that is a question which is not new. It was already asked many years ago by Adam Smith uh, with his book in the, uh, uh, in the na uh, Wealth of Nations. But uh, today, I think we have a much broader and comprehensive sense, uh, which uh, includes uh, natural capital, the relationship to nature, with climate change and biodiversity and many other things that is part of the richness or of the poverty of a country, depending on how the country is dealing with nature, but then also human capital, which means basically uh, healthy people uh, after the pandemic, you know, or during the pandemic, what does health mean? And also uh, uh, educated people uh, who can make a living and uh, find uh, flourish in their lives. And then also, of course, uh, social capital trust in relationships. You, you could see something of my, my chapter. I gave some examples, but uh, maybe you have some other questions. Uh, but uh, that is something which uh, I discovered, and I think it's very important. And the World Bank came out with an important book uh, just uh, uh, two years ago on the similar uh, research projects. Amazing. Yeah, just kind of touching on books and resources. Is there any other articles, websites, um, books, or any other of your writings, maybe one or two that you think are super um, like helpful if you're just kind of starting in the business realm? Yes. Well, you know, they are 
I well, first, for instance, I get I'm on the list server of uh, the business or the, the business and human rights uh, uh, resource center in London, and uh, I just got the, the new email uh, a few days ago, and they look at how human rights are respected or not respected in different countries. And so they look at uh, uh, well, French companies in Russia uh, who support uh, the war against uh, Ukraine. Uh, is this ethically acceptable? And what are the companies doing and how justifying and other companies which withdraw that? Or uh, uh, what do they do in terms of corruption? Corruption is a huge issue in many, many countries. But um, uh, one year ago, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, published a very good uh, book on uh, how to deal corruption, how to overcome, make the integrity and accountability and transparency of, uh, of government and organizations uh, in order to fight corruption, which is an enormous loss. So there are many important issues. And of course, it depends on the interest and the knowledge of each researcher. But uh, what I learned from our European experience is that uh, we should do that also in cooperation with business people, you know. And, uh, and so uh, we have done that in many ways. But uh, uh, we, we don't want us to invent new problems, but uh, to listen to uh, what our challenge is today and tomorrow. And that's why we are also organizing this global survey of business ethics I mentioned before. Amazing. Yeah, I'll for sure have to check all of those out. Um, and my final question for you is um, kind of touching back on Notre Dame. Why do you think Notre Dame, um, maybe their business program, to be more specific, is unique from other universities throughout the United States or even globally? Yes. Well, you know, we uh, at Notre Dame, we are pretty proud of uh, Notre Dame and the long history since 1842. Uh, and uh, I'm, how to say, uh, I, I think uh, what uh, has impressed me when I came to Notre Dame was uh, the president at that time, uh, well, he was already retired, Father Hisberg, Theodore Hisberg, who uh, was president of Notre Dame for 35 years. And uh, he was a young president in the 1950s when he was working uh, to study racism in the United States uh, in a presidential commission of uh, President Eisenhower. And uh, he uh, was doing a lot of good things uh, to open the university to the world and uh, to say we have a responsibility as a Catholic university, for instance, uh, for uh, the, uh, he founded the Ecumenical uh, Institute uh, in uh, Jerusalem in 1972. I spent two weeks there uh, in June this year, uh, and he thought uh, it's important that Protestants and Catholics and Orthodox come together. Or uh, our seminar was uh, with Palestinian and Israeli business people and NGO leaders. So bring people together and to uh, to promote uh, dialogue, a frank and open conversation, and to uh, to look for common um, uh, solutions to our problems. So I learned a lot of, from Notre Dame. Not everything is perfect here. Also, you know. Um, and uh, uh, I think uh, still uh, the international dimension in the business school could be enforced, could be stronger in business ethics. Uh, we do have uh, uh, now uh, the Keogh School of Global Affairs, which uh, includes nine institutes and centers uh, for human rights and uh, 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 for Asia and for Europe and for international studies and for uh, global health, etc. So I'm happy about that. And uh, right now, this in this uh, uh, 
June, July, uh, we have a group of 25 young African men and women from nine, 18 countries from Africa, studying at Notre Dame with the so-called Mandela uh, Washington Fellowship Program, which was initiated by Barack Obama, the president, many years ago, in 2014. And uh, these are wonderful programs here also at Notre Dame and many other universities to uh, learn from those young people what are the challenges, but also uh, to uh, help them to clarify the questions they have and to keep in touch when they go back to their home countries. Amazing. How fascinating. And it seems like there's so many opportunities at Notre Dame, just giving everyone access to um, a strong education and a strong career path. Well, thank you so much for joining, Professor. It was truly a pleasure meeting you and your story is super inspiring. Well, thank you for having me and uh, I hope you uh, find some interest. You know, I, I'm deeply convinced it became my vocation that uh, to well to uh, to improve business and to understand business from an ethical and economic and sociological and psychological point of view is extremely important to make the world a better place. Yes. Amazing. Thank well, thank you so much. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.